welcome and here we go again now today um i'm going to be uh doing a video uh discussing my five favorite peter capaldi era episodes so my favorite episodes uh from the 12th doctor's era uh on the show which spanned from 2014 uh to 2017 and i'll be discussing um what my favourite Peter Capaldi series is as well. Um, so we're focusing on all the positives of Peter Capaldi's era today. And then next uh, next time, uh, we're going to be focusing on some of the negatives. Now, a few things to say. Uh, sorry I haven't been able to get a video out for a while. I haven't been able to get one out since last week. Uh, obviously, videos will return to normality now. You're at least going to get one on a Sunday every week. And you're probably going to get uh, one on a Tuesday or a Wednesday or one midweek, at least one midweek. Obviously, if there's any news announcements, then I'll get a video up for that. Obviously, Star Trek Discovery, I've stopped my reviews for that for the time being. I may resume them, but uh, I have no intention to uh, due to my dislike of the series. Um, so uh, we're going to get into this now. So here we have it. Here, a bunch of papers. Um, these are um, every single episode of Doctor Who scored except from the missing episodes uh, of the show. So I've got from William Hartnell's era here and I've got Peter Capaldi's era here. So I've got loads of scores. I've got all of the scores. And I've got the top five and bottom five Doctors. So you'll be seeing a lot of these in between now and series 11. And obviously I'll do one for Jodie Whittaker as well. So it's got up to twice upon a time on these. So here we have it. I've got every uh, story scored. And on the basis of what I've ranked them out of 10, I've given the top uh, five Capaldi stories. Not episodes, but, but stories. Um, and um, I've put them all in a little list. So, at number five is the 2017 Christmas special, Twice Upon a Time. It may surprise you that it's this high in the list, but as you could tell probably from my first opinion if you watched it, it's a brilliant episode and a, a satisfactory ending um, to Peter Capaldi's era that I couldn't have been more pleased by. I think it was a wonderful... Um, finale to his era i think it was brilliant and it had so much great stuff in it particularly the closing moments which were absolutely uh fantastic um and you know um you couldn't improve on them uh in the final moments apart from a couple niggles Moving on to number four, it's Mummy on the Orient Express. A story from um, Peter Capaldi's first series, which I know didn't score much acclaim, but I think Mummy on the Orient Express is a fascinating story with some really intriguing concepts. First of all, the best thing about the story is the villain and the concept of the monster. So um, we've got the mummy, the foretold, um, who gives you the its victims um, only 66 seconds to live. Which I think is a fantastic story idea, which I absolutely adore. And I think this is one of the stories which I could introduce fans to, introduce new fans to, uh, w without watching any previous stories, because it's very classic Who-esque, and I love that. And I think that's why it scores in here, and it's Matheson's debut, and, and Jamie is such a brilliant Doctor Who writer. He's given us other stories such as Flatline and Oxygen, which are fantastic too, but haven't made our list. Uh, and number three is the Zygon Invasion and the Zygon Inversion. Now, the Zygon Invasion and the Zygon Inversion is a fantastic story. In particular, it's its final part. It shows off Peter Capaldi and Jenna Coleman in perhaps some of their best acting yet. Peter Capaldi delivers his epic uh, war speech in the second part of this story, which I think is fantastic and is his defining moment from his era. It just shows how great he is as an actor and, and, and made him uh, as the Doctor in, in terms of scenes. Um, I um, think uh, Jenna Coleman was fantastic too in one of her 
uh, final roles, and um, she, I think she was, she played a villain in Bonnie so well, and I think uh, she was brilliant as that. Uh, and obviously the Zygons are one of my favourite Doctor Who villains, if not my favourite, uh, so um, I was so glad uh, for them to return full-time after their camp appearance in Day of the Doctor. Uh, and number two, it's Heaven Sent. It may surprise you that this doesn't get to number one, and it may not surprise you what does get to number one, I don't know, but uh, Heaven Sent is a fantastic story, which is Peter Capaldi on his own in a confined space, and it's just so clever. Writing from Stephen Moffat, directing from Rachel Talahay, and most of all... Um, acting from Peter Capaldi because I think Peter Capaldi is fascinating in this story and just shows off his acting abilities uh, in, in this story I think uh, Peter Capaldi this is his defining episode this is this is his acting and what he is is a strong point and if you doubt Peter Capaldi as an actor then watch this it's the sign of a very good actor when you can carry an episode all on your own or a film or whatever so you know watch this episode it's fantastic and number one is world enough and time and the doctor falls an almost perfect finale to um series 10 there were a few niggles but i really really enjoyed it um it was one of my favorite episodes in a long time uh and and probably the best finale of New Who, in, in my opinion. Um, World Enough and Time, in particular, is such an eerie, fantastic, creepy story that brings back two of my favourite villains, the Mondasian Cybermen, the original Cybermen, that is, and uh, John Sims, uh, Master, um, and it's great to see the Master and Missy interact together. Peter Capaldi, again, gives a defining speech. There's some shocking moments. However, it would have been even better if uh, all of the stuff surrounding John Sim and the Mondasian Cybermen had been kept a secret. Um, on the, uh, so that's it for my top five. What are your top five Peter Capaldi stories? Make sure you leave them in the comments below. Uh, but until then, um, well, not until then, uh, please leave them in the comments below. Um, until next time, uh, when I, I, I will be seeing you next time uh, to discuss my bottom five Peter Capaldi episodes um so um i'll reveal what those are in the next video but you have to stay tuned to see what that is so i'll be back either midweek or next sunday so i'll see you next time same time same space goodbye